There's a recent clip from, I think, a couple podcasts ago where you talked about the negative real estate crash. Yep. Oh, psh, thing, thing, yep. You compare it to Venezuela yep. like this, and a lot of guys in the real estate community say, oh, we got Patrick, Patrick, you know, he's, yeah. he's flipping, he's, he sees it now. Yeah. Because uh, you you have a video from a, a year ago, my message to real estate uh, professionals, and and so and, and by the way, this last couple of weeks, within this week, yeah, the National Association of Realtors, uh, Home Savings of America, and and Keller Williams are found guilty of a class action lawsuit of colluding commissions, of 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 them raising. And next thing you know, as soon as that happened, three other brokers just got another class action lawsuit. Uh, earlier this week, a mortgage companies are asking for their senior loan officers to repay back their bonuses. <laughs> because things are things are tight right now, so there's two camps. You know, we were talking about two different camps of, of real estate professionals yep. we were talking to. First camp, they're having the years of the, they're having a the time in their life. Everything's great, listings, closings, you know, left over right. The other camp is, I haven't closed anything in a minute, and if I don't do anything right now, it'll be until next year that I'll get paid. H how do we reconcile and, and help? Because I know in financial services, when I came into it, I saw the ups and downs also. That's why I didn't get involved in mortgages because I was very easily attracted to that because I'm in Chicago, hot real estate market. And, and, and so what do, what do we t what message do we do and help right now with real estate professionals? How do we? Well, first of all, realtors, they're going to be selective hearing, right? They're, gonna, they get, they, they're right now so desperate. They have to pick and choose whatever story they want. My position doesn't change. By the way, to, to the realtors and mortgage loan officers who saved money, they don't look weak. But I talk to the guys that didn't save money. They're getting destroyed going through divorces right now, okay? They can hype it up all they want. They're getting divorces right now. They're going through tough times. And I feel very bad because yeah. all I'm trying yeah. to do is get these guys to do A lot of them are going into different things to sell, and I'm going to be a digital market. I'm going to get my insurance license, but they're going to different kind of markets to go through. So to these realtors that respond to what I have to say with a reverse crash, let's actually say that happens. Let's actually say that happens. Okay. So to those guys, do you really want to see interest rates decrease where we go from the eight points to seven, to six, to five, to four? Do you know if Powell lowers the rates from eight to four, say in a span of a year, say in a span of 18 months, do you know what that does to values of homes? Skyrockets. By the way, the house I bought, I bought it for $20,400,000. You've seen the house that I picked up. <laughs> when I'm in the, the day I am in contract, the next day I get a $25 million cash offer to buy the contract. I've shown you that email sure. before when they yeah. wanted to buy the contract. Yeah. Our house is roughly 1.1, 1.2 acres. We got 800, 800 feet of water frontage, 165 foot dock to put a yacht there. We got, it's a very nice place that we live in. Messi just moved right in next to us. Matter of fact, we were trick or treating with Messi. Our kids were trick or treating nice, with nice. him and his kids. He was actually dressed Crazy. out there. Very cool. Nice. I didn't think he was going to be doing that. Here's the point. I remember seeing that email. He wanted to rent your house. That's right. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. But I'm glad he bought instead yep. of renting. So he settled. They're, they're actually going there. The kids are going to the school. Yeah. So, anyways, so last week, ten days ago, when I sold my house, it was record breaking for that area. Fort Lauderdale just broke a new record ten days ago. A new house sold by my realtor, okay, on, the, on Wall Street Journal, $40 million. You know how big of a land it was? 0.4 acres. So it's less, it's not, a lot smaller than yours. A lot smaller. So that puts our property, some say, between 40 to $45 million, and we've only owned the house for, for a little over, I don't know, two, two and a half years mm -hmm. is what we've owned the house, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not selling. So it's not like, well, Pat's saying this because he wants to sell. Not at all, okay? Matter of fact, the right thing that probably needs to happen to our house is for it to go from $45 million to $31 million, $29 million, $30 million, somewhere around there. Why? Here's why. If rates come down, property value is not decreasing. Matter of fact, property value has even increased a little bit. Even though there's no inventory, people are not wanting to give up their 3% loan that they have for what? To go get another house with the equity they're going to pick up, and a new house they pick up is going to be at 8%? That doesn't make any sense. Why would I sell my house right now? I still have to go buy another house at 8% anyways, right? So to those people who are rooting for rates to come back down to four, all I would tell you is it's going to hurt many different aspects of the economy if we go there. But let's just say we do go there. Let's play that game. No problem. People haven't yet ran out of savings. They're still sitting on money. 
the market right now, if they keep printing money, they st printed trillions of dollars of money into the economy, right? Mm -hmm. the, the original, I'm talking to Tom Bilyeu yesterday for five hours, we did a podcast at his house wow. in LA, and we're talking about a possibility of a reverse market crash is what I was telling him. I started talking about this a couple weeks ago, where if they do some of these things, the market just goes bingo, and Dow and S&P, or let's just say Dow goes from 33 or 38 to 45 to 55 to 58, Okay, the more they print, the more money guys like me make. Because the more they're printing, money flows to the top. Rich get richer, poor get poor. Yep. But the disparity of what that's happening is getting bigger and bigger. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.